and sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. When brokenness and pain is all I know, no, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance. pray with me. Father, thank you so much that you uh, have defeated every enemy and we don't have to live our lives in fear. We can leave it in victory and we can live it in joy because of who you are. We thank you, Father, for being the reason why we're here this morning. We pray your presence in this place, that our hearts and minds would be turned to you so that we can inspect ourselves and see what it is about us we need to set aside so that we can live without fear and we can live in victory. And we can go from this place and make a difference in the world around us. Be with us even now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a seat. It's good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, I don't know how many of you, I'm glad you're here. Physically, you haven't checked out yet. Uh, but I uh, hope that you all have, uh, everybody has an opportunity to get away for fall break, to unplug, unwind a little bit, uh, and kind of recharge your batteries. And... Uh, you know, so it's a, good, it's a good weekend for that. I think our football team still plays at home, don't they? Football team still plays at home, which means the band will be here. Band of, and what? Thomas More or less. And so uh, uh, it's a little Catholic college joke. So uh, uh, anyway, uh, if you're going to be around, come to the football game, have a good time this weekend. But uh, I hope you have a great fall break. Announcements you can see there. Uh, you're used to that. You open the bulletin. You see what's, uh, what's going on, what's up, what's on the calendar on the right-hand side of the page, uh, different things. There's one change I need to uh, uh, mention. For whatever reason, I had brain air bubble in my brain, apparently. Uh, next week's chapel is not the Word and Worship. That's in two weeks. Uh, homecoming is uh, next a week from Saturday, and uh, next Wednesday is actually Heritage Day, CU Heritage Day, and uh, a gentleman... 
Uh, we were just having a conversation uh, that Al Hardy uh, has been uh, a part of Campbellsville University, Campbellsville College, Campbellsville Junior College since like 1955. The man has walked through a major part of the heritage, the history of what is now Campbellsville University, and he's going to be coming to share next week. I hope you're here. Uh, he's an engaging personality, and uh, uh, you'll want to hear what he has to say, but that is next week. And then the Word and Worship, Jonathan and Emily Martin will be here in two weeks, so I apologize for that mistake. I didn't even realize that until I was sitting down here earlier. Uh, that's how... Yeah, that's how my brain works. But anyway, you have that information. Other announcements you can see there. I know there's another announcement by Dante Hollis. Dante, I was looking for you, but are, where are you? Word, what? Thanks for sitting down close. Okay. I don't want to make Dante mad. He's like, he'll break me over his leg. <clears throat> yeah, go Dante. How about go faster? Okay, that's okay. <clears throat> Good morning, you guys. So uh, recently, I was I was sitting around thinking, and uh, I was just like trying to figure out what it's like an aura around people. Sometimes people deal with like depression, anxiety, suicide, and like they struggle with their mental health. So I kept praying about it, like maybe I should bring an organization like that to this campus, and. Uh, you know, just to help people cope with different method, with different methods. You know, some people turn to drugs, some people turn to alcohol. So the organization that I created is called One Beat. Um, some of you guys may have joined it through the Remind app. I sent out like screenshots, and it was like a text app, app that you can join. I send out uh, motivational messages, inspirational messages, uh, or alert you when we have meetings, uh, different things of that sort. So I really would like for you guys to uh, come out if you can. Uh, I'm not going to enforce it on you. If you just want to come eat some food, kick it, be around some positive vibes, you're more than welcome. Uh, I, like, I just want it to be an inclusive, like, support and helping coping method. Like, I don't want you guys to feel, oh, if I come, will I be judged? Because I feel like we all go through mental health and deal with depression and anxiety in our own ways. But I don't want you guys to have to sit there and struggle with that by you guys' self. And it's actually Mental Health Awareness Week. So... If y'all ever feel like y'all need someone to talk to, you see me around campus, you ever just, hey, two minutes of my day, two minutes of your day, and you just want to talk about any problems that you're going through, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I thought I was going to be fancy and had a little screenshot up there, but uh, if you know a friend, I can send it to a friend, I can screenshot it, pass it out, or however y'all want to do it. But feel free to sign up for the uh, messages every day. And I would love for y'all to come out next Wednesday at 7.30 in the bottom of the bask. Uh, we will have food. I know y'all love food, so we will have some food. We'll have some games, and we're going to kick it and chill. So thank you all. Thank you, Dante. Thank you for sharing that, Dante. Uh, he is a big man, and his heart is even bigger. So appreciate that. Uh, you can see that there's something different about the uh, front of the sanctuary this morning, and uh, uh, Dr. Hand is going to come and uh, talk about that a little bit more. Hey, yeah, so we got some shoes up here, just a few pair. Um, I'm so thankful to all of you guys. You have made the Buckner Shoes for or Orphan Souls Shoe Project just a success around campus. We had participation from, I think, all of our different schools, including our Louisville campus. And um, so this is the result. And, well, it's not all the result because we've still got some more back in the back that wouldn't fit. So... Uh, if you gave to the Buckner Shoe Project, would you just stand up? Yay. Good job, CU. I'm really, really proud of, of this project. Um, what we want to do now is just pray over these shoes because we want God to touch each child that's going to receive these. There'll be children who are disadvantaged or orphaned who receive these shoes both here in the U.S. and in uh, five or six other countries. So let's pray and uh, dedicate these shoes to God and to those children. Lord, we thank you for um, giving us this opportunity to, to give back to um, some children who desperately need some help. Lord, we pray that with each pair of these shoes that goes out from Campbellsville, that um, they will be a blessing to those who receive them, that 
each child will realize that somebody out there loves them and cares enough about them to to do this and lord more importantly that they will realize that you love them lord i'm so thankful for each person who participated in this may you bless them as well in jesus name we pray amen one thing the same God that never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the way he did the same God that's never late is working all things out working all things out oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest your name. someone who should be familiar with a lot of people because you probably had him in class, but he's a faculty member at Campbellsville University uh, and very knowledgeable. Damon Eubank uh, has been a professor at Campbellsville since 1989. Uh, he earned his Bachelor in History at Campbellsville in 1981, uh, his MACT in History from Auburn University in 1984, and his PhD in History from Mississippi State University in 1989. Uh, he mentions that uh, his goal, his objective career in his career is to instruct and motivate students in the discipline of history within the setting of a quality Christian liberal arts university. And so, you know, if you're taking history with Dr. Eubank, he's got a high standard that he wants to see achieved in your life because you've been a student under his guidance, under his tutelage, as it were. Uh, Dr. Eubank is a member of uh, any number of different organizations from 1982 to 1988. He was a member of Phi Alpha Theta. And then uh, from 1970 
87 until the present time. He's uh, been a member of the so Society of Civil War Historians. Uh, since 1991, he's been a member of the Kentucky Historical Society and the Filson Club Historical so Society. Since 1992, he's been a member of the Southern Historical Society, and since 1998, a member of the Historians of the Western Theater of the Civil War. Uh, he's written two books, The Response of Kentucky to the Mexican War, uh, 1846 to 1848, and he's also written In the Shadow of the Patriarch, The John J. Crittenden Family in War and Peace, published in 2009. He's got, written any number of different articles and reviews, uh, pages worth, that's why I'm flipping paper up here in front of you. Uh, we'll just go on to say that uh, he's made any number of different presentations at the 1997 Civil Wars uh, Summer Symposium, the 1998 Kentucky Baptist Historical Commission, in uh, 1999 the Ohio Valley uh, History Conference, 1999 the Civil War Symposium, and uh, so he's been involved locally, statewide, nationally, uh, in historical societies, but also even at Campbellsville University, he's been recognized for his excellence uh, in teaching. In 1998, he won the uh, he was the president faculty forum, uh, president of the faculty forum at Campbellsville University. In 1998, he also won the Challenger Award at the university. And uh, since 2011, he's been the chair of the social science division at the university, and it is my honor again to introduce to you, and I pray you will listen closely to what he has to say, Dr. Damon Eubank. I usually get the applause when I finish, not before I start. Uh, thank you for that kind introduction, Ed. It just reminds everyone that uh, I'm old. <laughs> uh, Ed asked me to do this last summer, and we scheduled a date. And uh, it's been an interesting uh, how that has worked out in my life. I have a story to tell. I want to... Uh, uh, tell you why I tell the story and talk a little bit about what that story may mean. About four and a half years ago, which to some of you seems like a lifetime ago, uh, things were going, I mean, great uh, for Lori and myself. Uh, at Lori's job, they had uh, just uh, moved into a new building, which they had been praying for, I think, for over 20 years years. Uh, they got accreditation, and uh, that year, uh, Lori won the Taylor County uh, Educator of the Year. Uh, we were doing well. We had uh, plans, just like everybody else would, uh, dreams and hopes. Then one day, Lori Collins said, I've got a terrible splitting headache, my eye hurts, and I'm having blurred vision. So uh, I said, well, go see Dr. Segre and see what they think. And she did, and uh, they uh, took an eye pressure test, and the staff there absolutely freaked out. They didn't want her to leave. You got to go see the doctor. You need to be in the hospital. And uh, we, uh, that began the journey. Uh, Lori was diagnosed with glaucoma. Uh, the uh, drops did not work. My grandmother had glaucoma, took drops for 50 years, could see as well at 98 when she died, she could at 58. But uh, the drops did not work. The pressure kept going up. Uh, they tried uh, every drop, and we've tried every drop that the FDA pretty much has approved at one time or the other. We have a list of what works and what causes a reaction in Lori, uh, how long, how many minutes it takes for her to start throwing up from some of them or her uh, body to start trembling in reaction. Um, they uh, have uh, uh, twice uh, uh, stuck a needle in her eye to drain out fluid to bring the pressure down. And that's, it's, um, it's not much fun to watch, and Lori tells me it's even less fun to be the one having it done to. 
uh, they had did a surgery uh, to put uh, uh, something in the eye to help it grain. Uh, it did not work. And uh, if anything, we think it may have just speeded up the process uh, in that eye. Her bad eye continued to go bad, but her other eye had shown no symptoms. And uh, we wanted to get answers. I mean, uh, there's not too many doctors in the state of Kentucky that have a specialty even remotely related to our situation that we haven't probably gone and seen. Uh, we went to Johns Hopkins, uh, the, uh, the number one eye center, glaucoma center in the world. Uh, uh, went uh, through a bunch of tests, and eventually, the last day of the visit there, the man said, uh, I've never been able not to tell somebody why they were going blind, but I have no idea why you're going to go blind. And I was bad, but she still had one good eye. And then on her birthday two years ago, we pretty much found out that the other eye was going to go too. And it was going to go even faster than the first eye had gone. And that was hard to adjust to. And uh, sometimes, you know, you just, you know, you wonder about God's sense of timing. Now, when did you call me? About July? Schedule this. Okay, Monday, Lori's going to have a procedure. They're going to go in with a laser. Uh, they're going to take out what produces fluid in her eye, which will take away the, the pressure and the pain. It also takes away her remaining vision. So this was the week, Ed, you asked me to do this. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting. So why bother to tell you that story? You have a story too. I don't know how many people are here, but uh, you may have parents going through Alzheimer's, dementia. You may have a loved one who's got cancer. Cancer doesn't care who you are or how old or how young you are. You may have somebody in your family's a terrible, tragic car accident, a major disability. You may have somebody you know that has uh, you know, all kinds of different issues. For almost everybody, I think for everybody, either you go through eventually in your life a time when somebody you love is hurting, are you going through it now? Are you really lucky? You haven't yet, but I'll just go ahead and tell you, your time is coming. So here's what I want us to talk about. Tell this story for this reason. Scripture tells us in Revelations 12, 11, and in several other places that there's two things that the enemy cannot overcome. First one, if you're a Christian and you've been to church at all, if you've listened to your Sunday school teacher, if you've listened in your Christian studies uh, classes, it's the blood of the Lamb. We understand that. The enemy can't take away your salvation. He just can't. Second one we forget about, the word of our testimony. The word of of our testimony. Or, maybe phrase it a little bit more directly, the enemy can't take away what God has done in your life. He can't do that. He hates that. He doesn't like for it to be shared. And uh, I've thought of every excuse not to do this. And I've had major distractions along the way. So, whenever you go through something like that, we have a God that loves us and wants to do good and wants to do good things in our lives. 
we also have an enemy that wants to hurt us and cause us pain. So as I was going through this situation, I want to share some of the lies that it's so easy for the enemy to plant in my mind about dealing with this situation and not looking at it from God's perspective. Um, First lie is this. No one cares about hearing this story. Just bottle it up, keep your mouth shut, go on, keep a stiff upper lip, uh, and okay, if you will numb out and don't express your feelings at all. The world will tell you to do that. And a lot, I've known some people that are really, really good at that. If you do, Eventually, that pressure builds up, and it's going to uh, manifest itself somewhere, somehow, to some poor soul around you. So, uh, Lord, have mercy on that poor clerk at Kroger's or Walmart that uh, well, your patient snaps, uh, the people you work with. Uh, uh, or it's, going, it's going to manifest itself in some way or the other. Second lie is just the complete opposite. Feel your emotions. Feel that pain. And just get down there and just wallow in it. Feel self-pity. Feel the hurt. Feel the pain. But don't attempt to deal with it in any way or see the other side. And if you stay down on that level, it's almost the same problem you have with the first one. You're so emotional. You're so down. People will want to avoid you like the plague because they've heard it so many times, and they're tired of it. There's some other lies. One lie, or another lie, is I'm alone. No one else understands what I'm going through, what I'm dealing with. I'm completely alone. Now, I know if you're not going through it, you can think rationally, that's illogical. But when you're in the middle of it, that's what you think. And you don't always think real clearly. Another lie, and so you now depending on your personality, some of these lies will have more uh, impact on you, I think, uh, than they will on other people. Another one is, I am powerless. There was nothing I could do to help Lord. It wasn't a thing I could do. What other thing I could say? And uh, she'll probably tell you it wasn't anything when this was happening. This has not been easy, and don't get the idea that I've arrived, and definitely don't get the idea that Lori has arrived either. Uh, it was, you know, it was, uh, you know, it just nothing uh, I could do seemed to be right. And I you know you just and, and my personality. I like to get things done. I like to resolve things. In my job, I've got, you know, got administrators to keep happy. I have colleagues to keep happy. I have students to keep happy. You know, it's just uh, you, know, you have to be able to uh, deal with issues and problems all the time, some form and fashion or the other. And I had no answer for this one at all. Um, next lie is the enemy wants to me to feel helpless uh, um, um, or maybe hopeless might be a better word it's bad and it's only going to get worse I can't tell you the times driving back from Elizabethtown or Louisville it depends on which uh, office we went to see the doctor at it's some really long, hard drives. And it, was just, and it seemed like it was nothing was working. It, it, nothing was improving. We, we, we never heard good news. And you know, it just, it wear, after a while, it wears on you. So you know, you'd feel hopeless. 
Okay, another lie at some point, if we're real, and sometimes if you are a believer, if you've been raised in the church, uh, if you know what you're supposed to be doing, um, you have that, uh, you have, you know, you know the, the, that Sunday school character that you're supposed to have that pretty much everybody expects you to have. Uh, but at some point, if you're real, you come around to, uh, I think, the last two, which are, I think, some of the, two of the bigger ones. Uh, and, and, and the first one is feel angry and bitter. To be mad at God. Now, if you're a believer, you probably aren't usually taught as a child, when you're mad at God, don't yell at him and tell him why you're mad at him. That's probably not what your Sunday school teacher or your parents probably told you to do. Uh, we get, we're angry at God. We're bitter about what's going on. And you don't know what to do with it. You know you're not supposed to feel that way, but you do. And we don't want to deal with it. That eats you up over time also. The Bible says the Lord works out um, everything for the good of those that love him. I looked at my situation. I didn't see much good in it. Um, and so there's, so I was just don't really struggling with some of that stuff. Okay, then the n next one was uh, you eventually get around, if all this bad is happening to you, that must only logically mean then, if the Bible said the Lord blesses and he's good to you, then God must not love you. Which, of course, is one of the most basic deceptions of the, of the enemy and is a major lie. Now, for me, uh, there's always, the enemy always likes to personalize some things. And so, those of you that know me very well know that I am one of the world's great tightwads. Now, I will say, Lord is a bigger tightwad than I am. And uh, Micah is working on it. Uh, his sister has already arrived there, but... Um, it's a family trait. So, and, he, and uh, if you're wondering, Micah got it from both sides of the family. So they don't have a chance. So one of the things was, and this is just like a personal life for me, is how in the world are we going to make a living if Lori can't work? If you're a tightwad, and I like to know of plan stuff out ahead. Uh, that's a question. Last uh, uh, spring, spring of 2018, uh, Lori uh, had to step down as an administrator at KCA. And so at that point, uh, a couple of things are going on financially. Uh, she had quit her job. And I thought I was paid poorly until uh, she got that job. <laughs> but we needed that money. Um, she quit her job. We don't have her salary. We had just moved into town so she could have some mobility and bought a house that needed major renovations to make it suitable for us. And thank the Lord uh, we found a contractor that could do that. And... Uh, what's going to happen? We didn't know at that point. Would she get disability or not? I've known people that have struggled for years to get disability. Government, they follow their own set of rules, their own timetable. Who knows? If she gets it, didn't know how much we would draw. Uh, didn't know if uh, Lori would have uh, any uh, possibility of uh, maybe doing some part-time work, tutoring, uh, adjuncting here at the university. At that point, we didn't know if we'd have anything. Um, I've been here for years, and I pretty much have for years taught most every overload I could. I've always done that. So, I mean, 
how could I teach much more and not have sacks have a fit when they come by and look at my course load? And uh, I mean, how in the world are our ends going to meet? And for me personally, that was a biggie. So I had all those lies, all those issues. I am emotional enough, I couldn't stuff it. And I'm a real wart, so I was dealing with all that stuff for some time. Over time, the Lord started showing me some things. It didn't always happen all at once. It wasn't always easy. I'm a little bit hard-headed and stubborn, sometimes kind of slow in being able to grasp things. Uh, and then uh, do not get the attitude or the feeling that I say, I have arrived and I know it all. Because even as I speak, uh, things are changing. After Lori's procedure next week, we're going to go through another physical uh, and emotional change. You know, it, it's just, it, it's, uh, it's continual. And when you think, you know, has said this, how many new things can I learn at once? I mean, she's moving from uh, the Zoom text technology to audio stuff now, and we're not techie people. Poor Micah has been stretched, you know, downloading programs and looking up stuff for us. Uh, we have to learn how to use a whole bunch of new stuff. Probably once we figure it out, it'll, it'll be fine, but it's, it's not been a fun process. Uh... Persistence in prayer is the key. Um, the, I love uh, uh, Mark Batterson's The Circle Maker. Uh, a lot of things he has to say about persistence in prayer are just really, really, really valuable for me. But the Lord started showing me a few things. Uh, the, the, the first thing of trying to tough it out pretty quickly showed me I, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I had, to, I had I'm not a good actor and I, I'm too emotional, so I, I don't have to deal with it whether I want to or not. And slowly but surely, a couple of things. For the lie of uh, isolation, the, I, the lie that I was um, in this uh, alone, the Lord showed me it was what like would be like a, like a duh obvious thing. Uh, I'm not alone. I had friends. I think that Lori and I are on prayer list with Catholics, Presbyterians, Pentecostals, Baptists. Um, I wouldn't be. Uh, uh, um, I've even had a couple. Of, I think I've had some students. that are on some Hindu list and some Buddhist list. I even had one student that was a Muslim said he would pray for us. So I'm, I'm not alone. Many, uh, I got several people that are sitting here have been with me as friends from the start. And this, that may sound like a little thing to you, but just when you finally open your eyes and you see what's going on around you, that, that was a neat revelation. Um, scripture says, in Proverbs 17, 17, that there's a brother born for adversity. I take a little liberty with the translation, the theology, you're going to have to just bear with me. I think there's sisters born for adversity. And Lori and I both have had several really good, great, helpful friends. Been great. Appreciate it. For the lie that uh, of powerlessness that I couldn't do anything. Well, I can't do anything. You know, that come to the point, uh, the one thing I do have the power over, I couldn't help Lori. But what I do have, and I learned a lot of this, Lori does this a whole lot better than I did, uh, is I have power over over my attitude. Attitude changes everything. I do have power over an attitude. 
Uh, and uh, I need to start becoming sensitive to God's perspective on different issues. And I need to do that. Um, for the, um, along that same line of, uh, of the lie then of hopelessness, something uh, kind of strange happened. Uh, it is as the Lord uh, closes one door, a lot of times he opens other doors. And I mean, one of the prayers that Lori and I had always had for, you know, be available, uh, Lord, what do you want us to do? Uh, and, you know, be sensitive to that, is uh, we got Gus uh, last uh, summer. And I'm telling you, everybody loves a black lab. And you talk about opening up an opportunity to talk about God. Gus is, he's a great tool. He really is. Uh, we, we have opportunities to serve God, to uh, reach out. Now, I will put this plug in. Now, Ed, go ahead on your calendar and put in Lori for uh, a convo sometime next year. You should have asked her to do it, not me. She's a better speaker than I am, and you need to ask her to do one next year. Uh, those of you that have, uh, I probably have a few pastors here in the group. I know a lot of you have home churches. Uh, one of the things that I think Lori is being called to, whether she wants to admit it or not, is to speak and to share. And so if uh, you have churches, you have groups that would like to hear the, her testimony, like I said, she's better speaker than I am. I uh, get in touch with me or the Lord, and we'll set up a time and a date. Uh, the, uh, the Lord, I think, is opening up opportunities to do some things. I've been, I think she needs to start writing myself and write a book, uh, but she doesn't like to write and do that very much, but I think that uh, that would be quite effective. Uh, and so the Lord's opening up opportunities that we wouldn't have had if we had been sighted. Uh, things are changing. Lori and I, have, uh, we always love to travel. Um, and uh, one of the things, we, I, uh, when we found this out, I mean, I, I asked her, uh, where do you want to go? So we went on a big trip out west, and we went uh, to Israel another time. And, uh, you know, I had some unique, uh, I love both trips. The one to Israel, I got to do something I'd always wanted to do. I was a spiritual director uh, for a trip. That was neat. Uh, a couple of uh, things that happened on the trip, which probably nobody but me would have ever even have known, I would have appreciated, happened to me. The Lord opens up new opportunities. When he closes doors, he opens new ones. You just got to be sensitive to it. Um, uh, or the anger and bitterness, the Lord keeps showing me how he has blessed me. And uh, I've had some unique and special blessings. For the provision, he showed he is Jehovah Jireh. And it was, Lord, you got to prove quickly for disability. That hardly ever happens. Uh, got a disability check. Door opened up to do some adjunct classes. Uh, and she's enjoyed doing that. I don't know if the students have enjoyed it so much, but she has enjoyed it. Uh, she's, uh, uh, for me, uh, a couple of months in, I had um, the people, uh, the uh, 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 history grant asked if I want to be the consulting historian for the grant. I didn't even, I'd done a grant with these people 10 years ago. I forgot they'd even existed. They contacted me pretty much out of the blue and I didn't even expect it. And uh, they paid pretty well. Uh, here on campus, uh, I didn't really seek it out, but students needed things done. And, I'm, and I had a couple of opportunities for a few little things here and there, more than I expected. Uh, I've been kind of surprised, no little things. A new house, my utilities are less. Uh, we let some things go when we moved in. Uh, I can afford to live on less money than I was when I lived out in the country. I mean, it, it, several things have just kind of 
happened. It would have been kind of neat. So the Lord has changed direction. He's changed my perspective. Changed my attitude. Hadn't been easy. Wouldn't really want to go through it again because uh, it had it has definitely not been fun. But he showed me some neat stuff. The Lord is reminding me that when I am weak, he is strong. Second uh, Corinthians twelve ten. And he kind of the, the last thing he reminded me of. Uh, I mentioned that there's a, a couple of things that the enemy cannot overcome. Uh, he can't overcome the blood. He cannot overcome the word of our testimony. And I do, one of my things I would love to see more churches do is have more testimony time in the church. Last thing the enemy, he absolutely hates this because it changes so many things, is the enemy hates to hear praise. He just hates it. It, it just, you know, it, it just, it just goes all over his skin. And one of the things I've learned kind of the hard way is a lot of times I'm down and I'm, I'm out. If I listen to uh, you know, praise music, colleagues, they'll probably see me a lot of times. So I got headphones on. I'm listening to music. Thank goodness I'm not singing along. I, they'd be coming by and slamming the door. I do think Dr. Parker and Dr. Howell have closed. They didn't slam it, but they have closed the door before I got the headphones. Uh, if you've heard me sing, you know why they did that. Uh, praise music changes attitude. I want to close with a couple of just, uh, quick things. Uh, though the fig tree does not bloom, and there is no yield on the vine, though the olive tree falls, crop fails, and the fields produce no food, the flock is cut off from the fold, and there is no cattle in the stalls, yet I will uh, triumph in Adonai. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Adonai, my Lord, is my strength. He has made my feet like a deer and has made me, uh, make me walk on my high places. Praise can change everything. He's the pain taker and he's the way maker. If you are going through an issue like I have described, quit trying to fool yourself and cope with it in your own way seek help. There are pastors here. Uh, there are counselors around uh, this campus. Seek help. De get help and change your attitude. That's my story. What's going to be your story in the future? I know most of you have an 11 o'clock class and you can't wait to get there. I have a 12 o'clock and I see some of mine uh, uh, sitting here when they should be getting their bibs together. <laughs> Do I, am I supposed to pray or are we supposed to go? Let's just go.